Hey, what's going on guys? It's Alex here. Here's a quick disclaimer before I start off this video. This is part two in a two part series of videos. So if you haven't seen part one, it should be popping up around the screen here. Go ahead and watch that and then come back to this. If you have seen part one or if you already know about the esoteric programming language called Piet, go ahead and stay right where you are. Okay, so I ended off part one saying that I would watch that video and teach myself Piet as I was teaching all of you Piet. And I did exactly what I said I was going to do. I watched part one, I took the time to sort of understand how to program in it, how to fix my infinite loop error, and I actually came to the magical conclusion of how to program in this bizarre, bizarre language. Okay, I hope you're all ready for this because I'm about to explain in like one simple explanation, how do you understand this abstract art programming language? Well, it turns out I feel kind of dumb for not realizing this earlier. I had understood everything just fine. How do you define data? How do you run a computation? All of that. But how do you, how could you possibly get your Piet program to stop? Because you know, once your Kodo counter actually finds either the edge of an image or some black pixel, it's gonna stop and it's gonna turn around and it's gonna see where can it go next. But it came from somewhere that wasn't black, right? So, you know, it's always gonna have somewhere to go. How do you possibly stop your program? Well, turns out I was thinking about it the wrong way. I was thinking of it more like BrainFuck or some other esoteric programming language might implement it. It's not a Kodo counter that gets incremented as to which Kodo it looks at. It's actually a Kodo chooser and it's used in tandem with the direction pointer. Every time your program wants to get onto the next block, it looks at the direction of your direction pointer, it finds that edge, and based on the Kodo chooser, it chooses either the leftmost on that edge or the rightmost on that edge. And you know, that might end up being like topmost or bottommost, because the Kodo chooser is actually relative to the direction pointer. But I realize is that in any given block, there's only four different Kodos that it can choose to hop to the next block from. The four corners, essentially. Which means if we make those four corners connect to either black or the edge of the image, we can stop our program. So finally, with that little bit of information, I now feel comfortable programming in Piet and showing everyone on YouTube. So finally, let's go ahead and print out the number 25 without getting an infinite loop. Okay, so I know it might feel a little weird seeing me use uh, Krita instead of like Atom or the actual text editor on this channel, but you gotta remember, because we're using Piet, we're gonna create an image which is gonna be interpreted as code. So, you know, esoteric languages call for esoteric IDEs, I guess. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new project. Uh, I'm gonna, just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna have my Kodo size be one pixel by one pixel, just so that way, you know, it's a little less confusing to explain and to see such a simple program running like that in Piet. And just so that we have enough space, it's gonna be 50 by 50. Because remember, we only wanna print out 25. So our program is hardly gonna take up all this space we have here. It's really just free real estate. It's free real estate. Okay, so first things first, because we want to define the number 25, and because our Kodo size is one by one, we're gonna want 25 pixels of the same color next to each other to define the number 25. So I'm gonna check on this reference site here. I feel like using the lightest hue and the lightest lightness, just so that way it's a little less confusing. There's gonna be no overflow, I guess, if we start with like here and we have to take five steps of hue, then we'll go one, two, three, four, five. I want it to be one, two, three, four, five. I don't want any overflow. So we're going to start out with FF Coco as our color to define 25. And I've already got it loaded up here. So go one, two, three, four, five. Okay. This is 25 pixels wide, one pixel height. So we have our number 25 now we want to push this number 
onto the stack because remember Piet is a stack based language. So let's go ahead, open up our reference site and let's find what, what change in color is the push command. So here I found push. It's one shade of lightness darker, but no change in hue. So if we started out with this color, this one right here, we want one shade darker, no change in hue. So we want, uh, what is this, like foo as the next color we're gonna choose. So we're gonna go in here, change that. And now this block right here is gonna push all this stuff onto our stack. And then once we've done that, we actually wanna print it out. So let's go ahead and see what color change is for prints uh, out as a number instead of a character. That's going to be one shade darker, five steps in hue. So we've come from this number, so we want one shade darker, and then one, two, three, four, five steps in hue. So we're gonna end up at dark magenta here, or Kuko is how I'm gonna remember it, so that way I don't mess up as I put it in. And actually, I also already had this one loaded. Uh, I did just run a quick test on this program just to make sure I understood it before I started recording. Uh, so what this is gonna do is this right here is our number 25. This pixel pushes it onto the stack and this pixel prints it out from the stack. Now we need our program to stop. So we're actually gonna make this block a little bit bigger because remember all the four corners in this block need to not be able to go to anything apart from black or off screen. And since this is a corner right now, I think we're actually gonna want to move this over yeah, just move it down one so that we can extend the block. So we're going to put black everywhere else on the screen here. So whether we're in this corner, this corner, this corner, or this corner, it can't go anywhere apart from either the edge of the image or some black pixel. So let's actually fill in the black pixels. Okay, so this is our Piet program. This is going to give us 25. And it's actually a pretty ugly program, as you can see, there's a lot of unused space, but we can actually make it a little bit prettier later on. Actually, now that I think about it, before I even go and run this, I've already made a mistake. So if you guys want to try and guess what it is, go ahead and pause the video right now, and I'll give you a few seconds before I go ahead and say what it is. Okay, so the error is every Piet program automatically starts in the upper left codel. Since there's only black here, I don't actually think the program would even run anything. We need a pixel from here to be up here. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. But now this entire block is 26 pixels, not 25. We want it to print 25. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this block extend out a little bit and that should fix it. Now there would have been other ways to configure this to get the same fix. I think Piet is really cool and that there's almost infinite different ways to program any given program. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to do this. We're going to export it and we're going to call it 25.png uh, and we're going to go ahead and run it. Okay, here is Bert Nace's online Piet interpreter. So we're going to put in our 25.png and we're going to go ahead and hit upload and execute. And there we go. We got 25. That's pretty good. Now that we've gotten our very basic program running, let's go ahead and try something a little harder. I'm not gonna do hello world because we're gonna have to define a lot of data, pop it onto the stack and then print it a whole lot. And that's kind of a long string of text. So I think instead, I'm just gonna say, hmm, how about Alex? We'll do Alex, I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and look up ASCII codes real quick, and we're gonna print out Alex in Piet.
Okay, and there you have it. That is how you would print out Alex in Piet. If you thought this entire little series was cool or you found this video helpful, please consider giving me a like, share, comment, subscribe, follow me on social media, or you can also click the little notification bell so that way you never miss out when I upload a new video. If you want to get more into esoteric languages like Piet, definitely go check out the creator's website or Bert Nace's online interpreter. I have not actually been in contact with either of them when I was making these videos. I just knew I wanted to make a Piet video. They seem pretty cool. I just heard about them on the internet. If there is some other esoteric language you want me to try out in a later video, uh, apart from Malbolge, <laughs> uh, please leave in the comment section down below. Uh, apart from that, I don't have too much else to say, so thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next week.